Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager for the Gyme Diffraction Facility located at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. This video will cover how to use HiScore Plus to identify the phases in a sample. The first step in phase identification is to load a data file. To do this, we need to go to File, Open. Let's open it. And we see our data in red. Now the first thing we want to do is determine the background. In order to save clicks, I just like to right click, determine background. We see that we have two parameters here that we can change to try to improve our background. And here we see the background is represented as the green line. So typically I like to go around 20 for granularity and then play with bending factor to see what looks best. Now in this example, the bending factors all look pretty similar, so I'll just leave it somewhere around 7. But for now, I will just accept the background as we have it. And we see that the background has changed to a dark green line. The next step is not really required, but it is nice when you're trying to do phase identification. Um, if we right click and go to search peaks, we can start to try to tell the software what is a peak and what isn't a peak, or we'll let the software determine that. We have some parameters here that we could change in order to help the software figure out what is a peak and what's just noise. I don't usually change these. Um, I'll just search peaks. We see a bunch of data markers along the top, so a lot of peaks have obviously been found. So for now, I will just accept. We see the peak list now here under peak list and we will want to go through and make sure that the software didn't make any mistakes it didn't mark something as a peak that's not or maybe it just missed a peak right off the bat I see that some there is an error here at low angles it's marking this as a peak but that's really just background and noise if we want to get rid of that we put our cursor over the data marker and hit delete on the keyboard and now it's gone. We'll right click, zoom back out, and now I will go through and just make sure that no other mistakes have been made. Now a lot of these peaks are rather small, so we'll want to zoom in a little bit. So let's start to scroll to the right, look at how well the peaks are marked, Obviously, the calculated and the data pattern don't match up all that well. That's okay for now. We will fix that shortly. We just want to make sure that all of the peaks are actually marked. Here we come into one problem. So this peak is marked. This one is not. If we right click, we can insert peak and then tell the computer that there is a peak right there. And now that blue line even matches up better with that red line. If you want to get rid of that option of inserting a peak, all you do is right click, insert peak again, and it's gone. So let's continue on, make sure that no other mistakes are found. This most likely is a peak, so we will just insert one there. Right click, insert again. Now if we zoom back out, we see here at the bottom a difference plot. If you don't see it there, you can always just right click, show graphics, and then choose difference plot. But we see that a lot of the peaks don't match up as we saw when we zoomed in. What we get down here is just the difference between the red curve and the blue curve. If we want to improve this fit, all we do is go up here, make sure we're in automatic mode and then choose Default Profile Fit. And you'll see those differences really start to go away. So now that we have all of our peaks identified, or as peaks, we can go in and try to determine what phases those peaks belong to. So if we right click, we can go to Search Match, and then we want to edit a restriction set. Most of the time, I just use this Chemistry tab. And here we can tell it what elements we believe we have in our material and to ignore all other elements. 
for instance, when everything is gray like this, it means that everything is possible. So we are searching through every possible pattern. If we start clicking some, one click brings us to this bluish color. So that means only patterns that have at least carbon and or oxygen have to be uh, searched. So that reduces it by quite a bit. If we make them green, then we will only search through patterns that have both carbon and oxygen. If we made them red, then we would search through all patterns except for those containing carbon and oxygen. So in this case, I know that I made a sample that had manganese oxide in it and silicon oxide in it. So I will just choose these three as possibilities, or at least one of, and I will add the rest to none of. So now we will ignore anything in red, any pattern that has an element in red, and only search through patterns that have manganese, silicon, or oxygen in them. And we see that we have 1,428 patterns. So I will close and search. But we see that the search match is done, so we need to make sure that we say OK. And here we have a list of possible matches. This is our candidate list. First thing to point out is that we have this score column, and it automatically sorts it based off of this column. A high score means that it's a high probability that uh, this pattern matches what's in your sample. But just because it's a high pattern does not mean that it's guaranteed to be in your sample. You need to check and make sure that it really is. And we do that by clicking on the pattern that we're interested in. And we go over here and we see these little lines appear beneath our markers or beneath our red data curve. And that represents the peaks that are contained in this diffraction pattern. We see that sure enough, each peak that is in that diffraction pattern matches up with a peak in our sample. This one looks like it's not, like we're missing it, but we see that the intensity is so low, we wouldn't really expect to see it in our pattern. Here, this line extends all the way up and matches about what's in our pattern. So this one, it's not a big deal if we don't see it. Now, if we click it, left click and drag up, we notice that the markers have now turned dark blue, but we also notice that these little V markers on top of the data markers or the peak markers have disappeared, but only those corresponding to the peaks of silicon oxide. So one reason that search peaks is such a nice feature is that it helps us more quickly determine what peaks we still have to find a match for. We see that after we accepted this as a candidate, it reorganized this list, and now manganese oxide best matches the peaks that remain. If we left click, hold that down, and then drag it up, we now see that those peaks correspond to green, which we see here, and now all of our data markers, the V markers on top, have disappeared. So now we know that all of our peaks have been matched. These are the two phases that are in our material, and we have completed phase identification. Now that does conclude this video. As a reminder, if you would like to learn more about using Highscore Plus, links to my other tutorials can be found in the description below. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments section. Thank you, and I hope you have a good day.